Modern borders don't tell you the truth, but your DNA does. And in the case of Germany, that truth reads like a contradiction. A genetic fingerprint built from peoples who should never have met. Bloodlines layered across millennia of war, migration, and survival. Today's German population descends from at least four major ancestral groups, each with its own genetic code, cultural revolution, and moment of dominance. From Ice Age hunters who carved flutes in frozen caves, to Anatolian farmers who carried seeds and livestock across continents, to Bronze Age horsemen who thundered in from the steppes, carrying new gods and new languages, to Celtic tribes, Roman settlers, Slavic migrants, and Frankish kings. Germany's genome isn't just mixed, it's stratified like geological rock. And this isn't theory, it's science. Ancient DNA, pulled from skeletons buried in caves, rivers, and valleys, shows us exactly how these layers fused. And what emerges is a portrait of a people built not from purity, but from constant reinvention. So how did this genetic jigsaw come together in a land split by glaciers, later by empires, and today by highways? To understand, we have to start at the bottom of the stack, with the survivors of the last ice age. Between 45,000 and 15,000 years ago, Northern Europe was locked under ice. Germany as we know it today was buried beneath glaciers a mile thick. But in a narrow belt of land stretching through southwestern Germany, life endured. These were the Western hunter-gatherers, small bands of modern humans clinging to survival in one of Earth's harshest environments. And against all odds, they did more than survive. They created culture. At Holofels Cave, archaeologists unearthed a 40,000-year-old ivory carving of a female figure the Venus of Hola Fels, one of the earliest known works of figurative art. Nearby, bone flutes with carefully carved tone holes tell us that Ice Age Germans were making music when mammoths still roamed. This wasn't just survival, it was expression. Genetically, these Paleolithic Europeans were distinct. Most carried paternal haplogroups like I2, among the oldest in Europe. On the maternal side, lineages such as U5 and U2 dominated, markers still present, though rare, in Germans today. These hunter-gatherers adapted to the ice, efficient vitamin D synthesis for long winters with little sunlight, traits for fat storage and heat retention, psychological resilience to endure the endless dark. By 15,000 years ago, as the glaciers retreated, they expanded northward, carrying stone tools and culture into lands newly free of ice. Their genetic legacy survives in modern Germans at about 10 to 15 percent. But even as the land warmed, their time as Europe's dominant people was ending. Because a new kind of human was on the move, not hunters, farmers. Around 8,000 years ago, migrants arrived from the southeast, Anatolia, modern-day Turkey, they didn't carry spears, they carried seeds. With wheat, barley, sheep, goats, and permanent architecture, they transformed the landscape of Europe. This was the Neolithic Revolution, and it rewrote both culture and DNA. In Germany, these newcomers spread rapidly, building longhouses, firing pottery, and establishing villages along rivers and fertile valleys. Genetic studies show they brought paternal haplogroup G2A, which quickly replaced most of the older hunter-gatherer lines. Maternal lineages such as H, T, J, and K appeared for the first time in Central Europe. It wasn't a violent conquest. It was numbers. Farming could support 10 to 20 times more people than foraging. Within centuries, hunter-gatherer bands were absorbed into farming communities. But it wasn't one-sided. Archaeological sites reveal intermarriage, hunter-gatherer men often joining farming societies, while women's ancestry remained predominantly Anatolian. By 5000 BCE, 
Neolithic farmers dominated Germany, and today, their descendants still account for 60 to 70% of the average German's DNA. Before we climb deeper into this genetic puzzle, what do you think? Does DNA tell us who we are more than borders ever could? Drop your thoughts in the comments and subscribe because here on Savage Past, we go deeper than history dares. By 3000 BCE, Germany had been shaped by two ancestral waves, Ice Age hunter-gatherers and Anatolian farmers. But then came a third, and it would transform Europe forever. From the grasslands north of the Black Sea rode the Yamnaya, nomadic herders with wagons, cattle, and newly domesticated horses. They moved fast, they struck hard, and they brought both genes and language. Their paternal signature, R1B-M269, spread like wildfire. It remains the most common Y chromosome in Germany today. With them came traits linked to height, lactose tolerance, and muscle strength. But their most lasting gift was linguistic. The Yamnaya spoke Proto-Indo-European, the root of nearly every major European language, including Germanic, Celtic, Italic, and Slavic. When they reached Central Europe, they fused with local farmers, creating the corded ware culture, hybrid societies that carried steppe DNA, spoke Indo-European tongues, and buried their dead with new traditions. In some regions, steppe ancestry replaced up to 75% of local male lines, a near total takeover. But it wasn't pure conquest, it was fusion, and it built the backbone of Europe's Bronze Age. Around 2800 BCE, a new phenomenon swept across Europe, the Bell Beaker culture, named for its distinctive pottery. It wasn't just a people, it was an idea. Bell Beaker networks stretched from Portugal to Poland, carrying copper daggers, gold ornaments, Baltic amber, and African ivory. In Germany, they fused with corded ware descendants, cementing steppe ancestry in the population. Their paternal lineages, especially R1B U106, became dominant. This haplogroup still defines much of northern and western Germany today. Beaker graves reveal archers buried with stone wrist guards, elites with copper daggers, and families laid to rest in symbolic patterns. These weren't isolated tribes anymore. This was a web of trade, culture, and belief stretching across a continent. Germany was no longer a frontier. It was a crossroads. By 1300 BCE, burial traditions shifted. Bodies were cremated, ashes buried in rows of urns. This was the urnfield culture, a turning point in Central Europe. It marked the rise of Proto-Celtic languages and societies. Hill forts in Bavaria and Hesse controlled river valleys. Bronze craftsmanship flourished. Swords, axes, jewelry, ritual objects. Genetically, Urnfield people were a blend of all previous waves, hunter-gatherer, farmer, and steppe. They laid the foundations for the Celts who would dominate southern and western Germany for centuries. Their influence still lingers in German rivers, towns, and place names with Celtic roots. By 800 BCE, Celtic culture flourished across southern and western Germany. Fortified settlements known as Oppida rose above river valleys. Trade networks linked them to Greece, Rome, and beyond. The Celts left behind ornate weapons, jewelry, and golden torques buried in rivers and bogs as offerings to the gods. Their languages influenced place names that still exist in Germany today. But the Celts were not alone for long. By the first century BCE, the Romans had arrived. Rome pushed to the banks of the Rhine, building cities like Cologne and forts along the frontier. Soldiers, merchants, and settlers from across the empire mingled with local tribes. North Africans, Syrians, Greeks, and Gauls all left genetic traces in German soil. But Roman power never extended deep into Germany. Beyond the Rhine and Danube lay tribes Rome called barbarians, people who would one day shape Europe in their own way. When Rome collapsed in the 4th and 5th centuries CE, the map of Europe was redrawn. 
Germanic tribes like the Goths, Vandals, and Lombards swept into Roman lands, founding new kingdoms. At the same time, Slavic tribes moved west into eastern Germany, blending their genes and languages with local populations. It was chaos, but from this upheaval, new identities formed, and one tribe in particular, the Franks, would define the future of Germany. By the 8th century, the Frankish king Charlemagne had forged an empire that stretched from the Pyrenees to central Germany. He united Germanic, Roman, and Slavic peoples under Christianity, law, and administration. His reign stabilized borders, spread literacy, and cemented bloodlines that still echo in German DNA today. Through settlement and colonization, Frankish and Slavic genes fused in the East, while Roman and Celtic traces lingered in the West and South. By the end of the medieval era, the genetic core of modern Germans was complete. A fusion of hunter-gatherers, Anatolian farmers, steppe herders, Celts, Romans, Slavs, and Franks, each leaving a layer in the genetic rock. Today, Germans carry about 60 to 70% DNA from Anatolian farmers, 20 to 30% from steppe herders, 10 to 15% from Ice Age hunter-gatherers, with smaller but measurable inputs from Celts, Romans, Slavs, and even North Africa. Northern Germany shows stronger ties to Scandinavia and Anglo-Saxon ancestry. Eastern Germany preserves Slavic admixture, Southern Germany carries deeper Celtic and Roman influence. It is the most layered genome in Europe, a living fossil of migrations, conquests, and survival. Germany's DNA is not a story of purity. It's a story of endurance, of how identity is built, broken, and rebuilt again. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and join us for the next video, where we uncover more untold stories from humanity's past. Each episode takes us deeper into the mysteries of history, connecting us to the people and events that shaped our world today.